Jeff Miller is Andrew's day one bay one. Yes. Original day one bay one, sorry Tasha. First client ever. And he's gonna come up here, teach everything he knows about growing a Facebook group. Andrew started where everyone started at zero. Jeff started at zero. Jeff has over 35,000. Andrew has over 13,000 in not that long of a time. So please rise and give up applause for Mr. Jeff Miller. Uh, thank you very much. No, we can just... The lower expectations, the better my speech is going to go, but yeah. Um, I just want to say hi. My name is Jeff. Uh, this is how I usually start all great presentations with uh, my face right there. I do want to say this is pre-clients, so like you can see there's very uh, few gray hairs, but as my agency grew, so did the stress and stuff like that. Um, but this was a happier time. I'm going to be talking about something like pretty darn cool, I think is applicable to everybody here. Uh, who's seen this before? Who's seen the butt? Who, like, who knows of the, uh, this is going to sound super weird in the replay, the ass fam, right? <laughs> um, this has been a really cool opportunity to build my tribe. And whether you need a, a support tribe, a team tribe, or a tribe that buys from you, what I've discovered is that the butt provides as strange as that sounds. Um, and just in case anybody hasn't connected the dots, ASS is Agency Scaling Secrets. Somebody, so, see, so yeah, there you go, right? Um, uh, just for the record, we are at 38,827 people, which is pretty darn cool. I'm very proud of that. And what I particularly enjoy about what I'll be teaching you today is I don't feel abused by my tribe. I don't feel like I'm a slave to engagement numbers. I don't feel like I have to jump on and be a dancing monkey. I can be me featured and flawed human being me. And I think I'm gonna be showing you how to do all this fun stuff, which will be pretty darn cool. Uh, today I wanna show you uh, how I grew my group from zero to 38,000 people in less than 18 months. I wanna show you how we sell stuff so it's fair, not salesy, and people feel better about buying from me. I'm gonna show you how to find people smarter than you, at the same time blow your competition out of the water. I'm totally okay with not being the smartest person in the room but I still blow my competition out of the water. This is how to grow your group, sell stuff and not be gross or shitty about it. Again, this will come out weird in the replay. Uh, with what we're calling the group engine, this is something you guys can do today uh, that gets people and builds an honest, dollar-driven relationship. By the way, this is the same group that went from zero to 38,572 people in 18 months. Um, this is the same group where we're rejecting half the people that apply. The same group that got me an interview series with people a lot smarter than me, people making an F, I mean an F, a metric ton of money. I got 60 minutes with each and every one of these people. Yeah, Alex is on there too. Same group that allows me to have an honest dollar-driven relationship where I get to sell stuff. Whether it's my cold emailing masterclass taught by somebody smarter than me, a book that makes my mother proud of me, or I get to say, hey mom, I'm an author, right? Um, or customer research and selling the same thing again and again, and again. More importantly, I threatened to kick everybody out. Uh, the group was growing too big, I didn't like it. Their spam was going through the roof. I said, hey guys, we're gonna be purging. And 1,500 people said, please don't. This was me threatening to kick people out, and 1,500 people said, no, I wanna stay. I did it without paid ads, without being an expert, without feeling like a dancing monkey slaving to engagement numbers. So, ladies and gents, here we go. This is how to grow your group sell stuff and not be gross or shitty about it. By the way, I'm used to like pointing at a screen or whiteboarding. Who's here, here's my lunch and learns? Where I slide deck and all that stuff. I'm used to that, so I will be like frantically pointing as an effort, but that's just how this works. This is step one, ladies and gents. You're gonna ask a real life question, and you're gonna ask real life people what their biggest problem is, just like a doctor, lawyer, accountant would do. Just like a doctor, lawyer, accountant do, a trusted relationship with a trusted profession. This is the day I opened my group, March 21st. That's a lie, by the way. It was open for two weeks prior. I was just ashamed of it. I was afraid of it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how it w would work or e even if it would work. I didn't know what, working wor uh, would, what it looked like. I was afraid of failing, and I was afraid of failing publicly. Does anybody ever feel that way? And of all the emotions that I could have when it comes to my relationship with the group or doing something new, well, as it turns out, the movie Inside Out 
as a really healthy way of establishing what your relationships were, and it wasn't joy with me at all. I was not excited about this opportunity. It was mostly sadness, because what if I failed? It was anger at myself about me not seizing the opportunity to be better, disgust about what could be, and even fear. Have you ever felt like that? Yeah. More importantly, has everybody like, talked, uh, talked about something called, I call it spinning plate disease, where you got one thing, you're spinning a single plate, you can do it, two things, spinning plate, you can do it, three things, and they all fall? That's how I felt. Turns out you can solve that problem pretty darn quickly by asking ASK, asking a few questions. All credit goes to uh, Ryan Levesque's Ask Method. You'll read the book. It's worth it. Step one. March 21st, ladies and gents, uh, we've got an awesome group, upcoming interviews, guides, secrets, all that fun stuff, so say hi, what's up, your blueprint is below. That was the first post, March 21st, 2018. And the first thing I did is start, start asking people, next day, what does everyone focus on? Gyms, restaurants, Kairos, I just need clients. You told us not to niche, that's really a vibe for me. But immediately, real life human beings were saying, oh, this is what I focus on. I said, cool, what's everyone's biggest fear when it comes to approaching business? I should have said businesses, there's a typo. Nobody cared about Facebook ads. And I started a chain and said, uh, I stress eat. That's me when I cold call. I said, what's everyone's biggest frustration with their agencies? And then I went live. This was the first lunch and learn ever, right here. Four things you can do today to get leads tomorrow. My secret to getting leads without cold calling, cold emailing, or not being sucky at lead generation, I'm going to curse starting in 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, right there. I just got really cool shells from Amazon. Those are real plants that died. <laughs> yeah, nobody cared. They just wanted their problems solved. I didn't have to be an expert. Just had to solve their problems. What's everyone's biggest frustration? What's everyone's biggest fear? Here you go. 123 comments, 73 comments, 156 comments. Within four days, my engagement, which is a bad number to generate or to, to view yourself and your relationship with, is just Facebook's version of it. But within four days, my engagement was comparable to groups four to five times the size. And more importantly, I had a real life conversation with real life people better than the holding pen community of other groups, where it's just like, hey, I appeared, do you want to buy my stuff? That's the book, Ryan Levasque. Who here has read this book or heard of it? Cool, right? For, for those of you that haven't, he's a Brown University neurologist. I used to say Stanford, that's incorrect. Brown University neurologist discovered that if you ask the rest, write five questions, get 95% of the way of unlocking somebody's wallet, solving their problem, moving them towards their goal. Write five questions. Needs, wants, fears, and goals, what they hate or what they tried. That's it. Five questions. So I asked, what's your biggest goal with your agency? People told me. Say again? I'm um, colorblind, so it looked blue to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you can see what I'm doing here is I'm literally asking people. I didn't have to think about it. What's your biggest goal to your agency? You can see 139 people answered. What's the number one problem you had with hiring a VA? Nearly 200 people answered. What's the number one thing you needed from your last paid course or program? The number one thing I wish you could outsource. You want to get your client on TV? I didn't know that until I asked. Cold emailing. What's the number thing you wanted? A two-day in-person mastermind. I didn't plan my mastermind. My tribe did. Here's more. So to answer your question, uh, I always say Jeffrey M. Bannock, like it's like an official title, right? Um, but to answer your question, no, not really. Um, I said, what's the number one thing missing from the last Facebook ads course or inner circle? 87 people told me. What's the number thing you need to avoid at all costs? Uh, what's the number thing you want from martial arts Facebook ads starter kit? Again, and again, and again. People are telling me what they want because I asked them. How many people are going, oh my God, I should just do that from now on, <laughs> right? How many people f would feel better if somebody asked them what their problem was and said I could solve that in exchange for money. Right here. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing it with it's public. That's step number one. And keep in mind, these, aren't, these are real life people 
with real life problems and not, I call them bullshit engagement numbers, like what's better, cats or dogs, red or blue? No, these are real life human beings that have real life problems and I'm offering to solve those problems. And every single customer research post follows a format, what's your X problem with thing? Needs, wants, fears, and goals, what they hate, what they tried. Every single custom research post follows that format. There's some deep psychological reasons behind it, but the shortcut is here. And if your custom research post gets no traction, it's because they don't have that problem. Now you know not to launch a product that solves it. And that's it. It's not as hard. If it simple didn't work, complicated isn't the answer. You have to make simple work. So that's step number one. More importantly, by the way, it spurs a real-life conversation that can move somebody forward. It creates a real-life community where people can talk about their problems, an environment that's not a holding pen, hoping for a sale. Step number one. That's it. Step number two. Provide an option, but not an obligation, for an honest, dollar-driven relationship that's worth three to four times what people pay for it. An optional, honest, dollar-driven relationship worth three to five times more than what people are paying for it. Who knows this guy? Raise your hand if you know who this dude is. is that Bieber? Yeah, that's Bieber. I should have not taken a photo with his name right at the bottom. But yeah, that's Justin Bieber. Has anybody ever been to a Justin Bieber concert? I haven't either, right? But he's super, oh, one person has, yeah. But he's super massively successful. Everybody knows this. And millions of people millions of times every single month are more than happy to pay him money. And depending upon the level of interaction and closeness, you get to pick. How much would you like to pay Justin Bieber money? And what would you like to get? You can get a tour. If you want to pay money, you can listen to him free if you want. Or you could get a VIP backstage pass. Cool, right? Depending upon how close you want to get, you can spend different, I made up these numbers, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> like, you get what I'm trying to point at. And more importantly, does Bieber or an author or a artist or anybody that you know that you're comfortable paying money to cut their service or song off halfway through and say, oh, no, 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 that's only for premier members. They don't do that. You get a great experience no matter what. Whether it's a song on the radio or a song in person, you get a great Justin Bieber experience. And it's always worth more than what you paid for it. More importantly, when you buy a ticket for a Justin Bieber concert, it clearly has a price. It just says it's 97 bucks. He tells you what you get in exchange for those dollars. Nobody gets pissed when he sells tickets. And yes, you can pay, and here's what you get. So what do I do? I sell tickets. Makes complete and total sense. And this will be impossible to read. I'll set you up with a slide deck later on. But this is my master class on how to run customer research so you know your campaigns will work before you launch them. Easy. I'm going to sell you a ticket. Now, you're going to put up a launch post. That's just like what I do. This is step two of the uh, group, uh, of the uh, Facebook group engine. You're going to tell people what you're covering and teaching. You can tell them it's going to cost money and what they're getting in exchange for money, an honest dollar-driven relationship. And by the way, I do this again and again and again and again. I sell in my group twice a month and everybody's okay with it because they know what they're getting. How many people would sell more stuff if they knew what to teach? How many people are saying, I can't sell stuff because I don't know what to teach? How many people feel this apprehension because they aren't perfect in what they're doing, they don't know what to teach, and even if they had people in the room, they would not know what to talk about? cool. Don't worry. I got you. I've been there. I get it. Do you think Justin Bieber makes this shit up on the spot? Do you think he practices? practices? He practices, right? Do you think he's making it up in practice, or do you think he's listening to somebody smarter than him? He's got a choreographer. Is that the right thing, right? He's got a songwriter. He's listening to people to tell him what to do. Hey, me too. Look, the customer research post told me what to talk about. This is the problem that it solves. No, it's not free. If you want it, this is what you got to do. That's it. Very clearly says there's a price on it. It says it's not free. What are you getting? Again, 
and again and again and again and again. The three launch posts on the right are my three best-selling mini-modules. The one on the left is about custom research, the one in the middle is about proving your leads are legit, and the one on the right is onboarding docs so your clients want to hear a pitch. Best three master classes, mini modules, whatever you want to call them, they told me what to cover. So I did. And now I can sell stuff again and again and again and again. And what's interesting, by the way, is I can sell the same stuff again. There's 38,000 people in my group. There's 7 billion people in the world. If you sell something one time, you're probably disserving your audience. So I can sell it again. 458 comments, 258, 362, the same one. And everybody's okay with it. Justin Bieber gets to perform the same songs. Okay, right? And what's even cooler is now I have a store. Look at that. The one on the bottom left, that's Brandon Becker's class. I, yeah. I don't know anything about VAs. So Brandon Becker taught it. Look at that. If you want to buy a replay, I just point you to the store. That's all you have to do. Step number two, just have an honest dollar-driven relationship and let people pay you money. You're gonna blow them out of the water. It's gonna be worth three to four times as much, and as long as I solve their problem, they're gonna be happy. I don't have to be the expert. I'm not an expert. I go on my lunch and I say, hey guys, I definitely like, messed up a lot. I have to rebuild everything from the ground up. But as long as I solve their problem, they're gonna be happy. And more importantly, it stops me from hating my audience. And more importantly, it keeps them abusing my time. Has anybody felt like that before? This is it. Right here. Step number three. Make it easy to answer questions en masse, predictably and reliably. Who here has a problem with too many messages, too many emails, too many group texts, too many, yeah, and they're all, they're all important, I get it. Some are more important than others, but I get it. I'm going to right now solve the fundamental reason why you're getting it, and you'll probably cut your DMing by 90%. The Lunch, Learn, and Live. Who's seen my Lunch, Learn, and learn Lives before? Who knows this guy? It's Russell Brunson. Who knows this guy? Russ Rafino. Who knows this guy? Right? Who here has ever said, ever, if only I could ask them a question? Wouldn't that be cool? If only I could get 30 seconds with these people. If only I could pick their brain, then maybe I could do the thing I've always wanted to do. You ever thought that to yourself? Me too. So I watched. This is his Funnel Friday. And I commented there. This is Russ Rafino's, and I commented there. This is Dan Henry's, and I commented there. I had asked questions on their lives. And you know what happened? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Cool. Don't worry. It's okay. I'll send you a PM, right? So I'd PM them. Maybe they forgot, right? They're definitely going to respond that way. <laughs> <laughs> He's just an email person. I get it. And fundamentally, from a person that wants to better serve and treat people, I just couldn't understand it. If I could message people back, why couldn't they message me back? Until one day my inbox looked like this. This is what yours looks like, too. Until one day I got 99 notifications and 99 messages and 99 group chat messages, and it was a mess, and I got it. I was ignoring real-life people. It all made sense. Too many messages, just not enough time. I know the messages were important because they're from a person. I get it, but what was I gonna do? That wasn't good enough. That just plain old wasn't good enough. So I said, what do I want from Russell Brunson, right? I wanted to pick his brain over lunch without paying $10,000. <laughs> yeah, I just, why can't we just have lunch together, man? Like, let's be best friends. I wanna text you more, right? So I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do lunch. Lunch and learn live in 15 minutes, everybody. Ask your questions. I'll get to them on the live. 
Cool. June 26, 2018, that was the first one. So I did. People asked me questions. That was it. That's Chris, based out of England. He said, hey, could you speak a little bit more how you manage your expenses? We charge you after $13 a month. And I gave him a good answer. And I didn't just talk through it. I wrote it down. Now I can tell every single person that DMs me, hey, I'm super busy. I know your question is important, but can you ask me on the Lunch Learn and Live? Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. And it went really well. And because I could spend time answering their question, I could answer them in depth and correctly. And the core reason, and put them on a better path, which made for a better lunch and learn, which made for better answers and made for a better group. Here's a lunch and learn and live from Wednesday. 1,200 views, I don't know if that's good or bad, but you know what's cool? My inner circle also participates in here. This is how I best serve people who pay me money and people who don't. They also ask questions on here. I say, hey, can you ask me on the lunch and learn? I think other people can benefit from this. They say, yeah, sure. <coughs> Bullet points. Update on my prospecting engine and getting 30 yeses in 30 days. Oh, that's cool. People should know about that. It's on the lunch and learn. You don't have to ask me anything. Here's another one. Uh, my game plan to take 10 agency owners and add an additional 10K a month to their bottom line, including my own. That's a good lunch and learn. Uh, my local celebrity campaign. That's cool. People are making money with this. See it again and again and again. Here's what's funny. My internet sucks. Just turned off halfway through the lunch and learn. Just disappeared. Has anybody seen this happen to me during lunch and learn? Like, my internet gets, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I pay for the most internet in the, I don't, but it just cuts off. People waited. They knew that I valued the time we had together, so they waited the five minutes for me to flick the switches. When was the last time you spent five minutes on a YouTube video that did nothing? When was the last time you spent five minutes hoping somebody came back? 90 people did. Because I make the lunch and learns worth watching. You need to be doing this. But more importantly, look at these bullet points. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm not making it up on the spot. Three things I'll be sending to my VA that should get me ten, five to 10 more clients in 60 days. VA Masterclass is live, get your tickets. How to handle the question, do you run ads for yourself? What happens when you meet the guy that taught Russell Brunson how to webinar? The makes sense structured way I increase my bike shop prices by 20% and how you can steal and use it too. The dollars and where I'll be putting them to get 100 appointments a month. This is real stuff that I'm discovering, that I get questions about. And if I ignored your question and your question, you know what would happen. You'd still have that problem. This is how I take care of people. And by my estimate, I've done 50 Lunch and Learn and Lives. I've got 150 bullet points. I've got 100,000 views, 5,000 comments, and 1,500 minutes of slide deck-driven, reasonable, leverageable, leverageable videos. I don't have to recreate any content. I just clip it. And you guys can do this too. Here's some topics I've covered with my Lunch, Learn, and Live. The prospecting engine, the how to increase, increase, the out, how to increase your fees, the lot out campaign, you can name it ultimately so I can make sure I take care of real life people, not engagement numbers. Step number three, for your Facebook group, make it easy to answer questions en masse predictably and reliably. Every Wednesday, I do it every Wednesday. And now people are saying, Jeff, I was gonna PM you, but I'll just ask it on the Wednesday Lunch Learn and Live. DMs do dropped by 90%. And now when somebody DMs me, it's an emergency, and I can care about it. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. Step number four. Hype someone up and share the spotlight so someone else other than me wins, aka the hype post. I'm not perfect. I know I look great, but I'm not, right? I know I can't master everything. 
even though people think I am, I'm not. I have to learn every single day, week, month, and year, but my problem is I know and learn best from other people in an actual conversation. Does anybody learn best from an actual conversation? Yeah, that's how it works. But you can't really do that with everybody, so you get books. Cool. How many people have read every single book here? Not me. What about here? What about here? That's just the first 30. If you haven't read every single book here, well, you're already behind the curve, and me too. It's nearly impossible to keep up with new and exciting and transcending ideas, so how can I learn from the best in the shortest amount of time but still make it worthwhile for those people? Well, I'm going to share the spotlight just like this. Imagine if you could have 60-minute one-on-one with somebody two, three, five, or even ten times smarter than you right now. Imagine if they shared how they did what they did, gave you specific instructions, and, they, and said, yes, you can pick my brain. And then they said, thank you after. That's what happens when you share the spotlight. I've talked to people who have sold $200,000 in real life event tickets in 24 hours. So when my client says I want to throw an event, I know what to do. I've talked to somebody who landed a 10 location franchise deal, somebody who made $30,000 from one podcast, somebody who went from zero to a million dollars in 18 months. Come on. All because I offered to share the spotlight. These are ultimately real life human beings on a similar Facebook ads journey. And the interview, by the way, that I do with them is not about secretly pushing sales or courses or coaching or like, hey, buy my stuff. Nope. It's about them and their story. How they won, whether it's through my coaching courses and paid programs or not. And I focus on them and the tribe. A uh, big question I always get is how to make sure my interviews are worthwhile. This is my secret. This is my weapon. How many people here went to ClickFunnels? Cool. I wore this butt shirt at ClickFunnels. That was fun. Immediately, people said, oh my God, can I do an interview? I said, all right, so this is how it works. You know, step one, we, d we do the bullet points, and then step two, uh, you have to make sure you do the strategy sessions, and step three, you have to do this, step four, you have to do this. Oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, cool. Uh, let me walk you through it. So step one, we have to do this. Step two, I had 50 of those conversations, and I started to hate my tribe. That's when I knew something was wrong. So I went home, and I filmed this. This is my butt group interview funnel. Anybody that wants to do an interview, that's cool, man. Let's talk. Just kind of go through here. You want to do an interview? Here's how it works. Just a one minute and 58 second video. Me explaining how it works, that's it. Tells them how to write bullet points. What we're gonna talk about, so it's worth watching. It's not just plugging their stuff. Hey, by the way, there's a hype post, you're required to interact with the people on there. Yes, you have to, otherwise I cancel it. So they know what they're doing and know what they're getting into. And more importantly, that the tribe knows what to expect. The tribe knows when somebody says, hey, I'm interested, please tag me, that the actual interviewer will say, I'm excited for you. That's cool. And more importantly, every single person I do an interview with has to guarantee that they will talk to three people on the phone for 15 minutes, either in a group setting or one-on-one. -on -one. Imagine if Russell Brunson said, I promise to talk to you. That's what I paid forward with. <coughs> they have to agree to this. I personally introduce them, and then I follow up a week later. And if they want a JV, here's how it works. I lay it all out. That's it. And because of it, we got some pretty cool bullet points. This is Matt Platt, the right way to create ads at work, convert and bring people into his client's doors. This is Jordan Key, uh, how he books 15 money-making appointments. Uh, this is Ravi, the one thing he wished to make in 40,000 a month. Uh, it's Andrew, the secrets to getting tur cutting turnaround times by 90%. Like, you can see these bullet points. These make complete and total sense. And these are awesome because of the interview funnel. So that they get their 15 minutes of fame. So the group isn't just about me. So the group, the people in it, find their best fit person, whether it's me or somebody else. So the relationship remains honest, and they're okay with me not being the expert. I don't know everything. I'm embarking on my own journey, too. And it's announced with 24 hours notice and not at random times throughout the day. Look at this. Oh, here we go. I messed that up. So that 
someone other than me starts winning. When was the last time you helped someone else win, right? The step number four, hype up and share the spotlight so someone else other than me wins, aka the hype post. It's usually my Thursday slot. Ladies and gents, there's making sure the interview blows their socks off and pays it forward, aka the interview. This is why people watch my stuff. Who's seen that Facebook Live on the bottom left of their screen, a little thing that pops up, somebody's face waving? Has anybody ever seen that on their desktop or their phone, like the live notification? Raise your hand if you've ever seen that, right? Cool, great, fine, perfect. It's, it's there for three seconds and then disappears. Okay, maybe I catch it, maybe I don't, whatever. I'm going to ask you a hard question. Is that your accidental strategy for making your lives worth watching? Do you just go live and hope for the best? And is that good enough? We routinely get 50, 100, or even 150 live viewers with every single interview. The numbers don't matter, the purpose and the steps behind it do. These interviews are not randomly set up, they have a strategy behind them, and my goal is to make the interviews worth watching and learning from. When someone wants an interview, I put them through the interview funnel. You can film that tonight. They schedule time, submit their bullet points. I announce it with 24 hours to go, who's Andrew? Live guest. There's his face at the top of the butt group. His spotlight. He's the expert. He guarantees results. I don't know how to do that. Let's talk. I would pay to talk to somebody who knows how to guarantee results for four inches, but he's going to be happy that I don't because I'm sharing the spotlight. Like this post and comment below to be tagged during the live interview tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. That way, it's not three seconds. It's a tag and then they get reminded again and again and again. It's optional. They don't have to do it, but they know Andrew will reply if they do. And then I email it out to every single person on my email list. 15,000 people get to see her face. When was the last time you put someone else's face in front of your email list? And then, when we're going live, look at that face. Oh, I should have picked a different thumbnail. Uh, Gene, my VA, tags everybody who wanted to be tagged and reminded, because Facebook I don't know how that works. Mark Zuckerberg decides to send the interview out, we get 200 people or not. We need something more predictable and reliable. So you want to be reminded? I got you. I'll remind you. We're cool. Jean does it. She's my VA. And just as importantly, I want to give someone else their 15 minutes of fame that could lead to their career. So we do hashtag Andrew my face. Please pick your own catchphrase, but you know what I'm doing. At the end of the interview, I say, hey, everybody, if you'd like to talk with Andrew, or whoever else is on stage, um, whoever else we're doing the interview with, um, just hashtag Andrew my face, hashtag Ravi my face, Jimmy my face, Abby my face. I'll pick three people and personally intro you and get a 15 minute one-on-one. -on -one. Paying it forward. There's no hand wavy intro. I'm not slaving for engagement numbers. I start the conversation immediately. Who's seen a YouTube video where they like tease you and then they like do their intro and you just skip it like a third of the way in? I don't, I, don't, I hate that, I hate that. I don't do that. We just start mid-conversation. We're going live right now. It's about their story. It's about the bullet points, and at the end, there's a strategy session call, and then it ends. It's clean. It makes total sense. It's not focused on me. It's focused on them and the tribe, and that's why people join the ASFAM. They're on the top of the 38,000 people group for 24 hours, email for 14,000 people in the top of the group for three days. Then I rotate the post. Here's what's even cooler. There's Andrew. Look at that. Everybody I do an interview with gets letterboxed videos they can reuse. When was the last time you gave your interviewers a gift? I give mine every Friday. <coughs> That's fucking cool. And you want to hear something crazy? My group has a free course that blows most paid courses out of the water. I have an interview series that beats up most $1,000 courses. I have an interview series that beats up most $100 membership sites. I have a group culture that beats out every cattle call group. And ultimately, I'm creating a group worth joining. Now you know how this works. When, when you joined a group, did you get a gift? 
Did you get like a free course or something like that? Or was it just like, hey, wait till I show up? Has anybody ever gotten a free uh, gift when they joined a Facebook group? Say again? Got a lead magnet, great, which is a lead magnet, right? When people join my group, they get the $10,000 a month Facebook ad agency interview series. My face on it, but whatever. Every single interview I've done, all yours. Thanks for joining. I could make this a $10,000 program. Just, it's interviews, and I know people who charge $10,000 just for interviews. It's yours, it's free. Thanks, enjoy the ad spam. That's it. And what's crazy is I know there are Facebook official employees and admins in my group. I know there are, because I got this email. It's weird, right? Like they PM'd me saying, hey, we like what you're doing with the group, uh, enjoy the butt even though it's not okay, but why don't you come by and, and tell us how you're supposed to grow your group and how you're supposed to interact with the tribe and stuff like that. So I, I actually met Cheryl Samberg, the CEO of Facebook. And I was like, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. that's cool. Got a, little, got a little woman crush on you, but that's fine. You know, how you doing? And I'll, and I'll buy you dinner, yeah, that's fine. But this is a real letter and this is proof that you can maintain an honest dollar-driven relationship with a large number of people and build a tribe of buyers, a tribe of support, or a tribe of team. In a way that makes sense, if you need a graph, this is the group engine. It's not hard. And just like going to the gym, doing it once is great, twice is better, five is awesome. I do customer research, so I know what to talk about. That's it, I just ask people. If my customer research bombs, it's because nobody cares about that thing, so I'm not gonna talk about it. I launch a launch post taught by Andrew Cousy to me so that I can maintain an honest dollar relationship and sell a ticket just like Justin Bieber. I do a lunch learn and live that makes a lot of sense, bullet point driven. I do a high post, so, high post so somebody else can win and interview so that I can learn and so can everybody else. You wanna hear something even more crazy? Yeah. You can do this too. It costs no money to be better. None. It costs no time to be better. It only takes your want to better serve. That's it. I take care of my tribe. I got you. Just let me answer in the Lunch Learn Live. I know that's a problem. Can I find somebody to do an interview with? I get it. No, no, your problem is unique to you, but not the first time it's come up. Can I send you a Lunch Learn and Live? Can I send you an interview? Can you ask me on the customer research questions? The system works for the first time in my life, I can say that, right? And what's even cool is you can start this journey today by asking people, whether it's here, your group, your email list, your friends, your text messages, whatever. When was the last time you asked, hey, what's your biggest problem and how can I solve it? How many people would feel better if they got asked that, right? So that's what I do. And that's what you can do again and again and again and again and again. And if you want a group of real life human beings that you can have an honest dollar driven relationship with, the group engine is how you do it. So that's been how to grow your group, sell stuff and not be gross about it or shitty about it, with a group engine that gets people and builds an honest dollar driven relationship with a large number of people. I appreciate your time. This has been the Bug Group Agency Scaling Secrets. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay, right? Um, we have some time for questions. If anybody has a question on like growing a group, maintaining an honest relationship with a group, selling a thing, if you have any questions specific about Lunch Learn Live, there's a mic over there and there's a mic over there. Now is the time. This is my in life, Lunch Learn and Live. Don't DM me or PM me. I'm gonna tell you go to the group, right? Um, so here we go. Hi, Jeff. Hey, how are you? What's going on? Good, very, very good. Did uh, this, this meter beat your expectations? I hope it did. Like, she, she's like, Jeff, I'm only here for your presentation. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, um, no pressure. I, I have a question is, um, obviously your, the outcome you wanted from like, building this tribe was to sell like, Inner Circle or your courses, right? So I was wondering sometimes when you give out the modules, the, the free courses, do you have concerns that it's giving out a Band-Aid, whereas people actually need a brain surgery in order to solve the real problem? So that is a fantastic question, because ultimately, what you're asking is why I built the group in the beginning. 
and I'm gonna address that first and then the rest part of your question, so just hold on that second half, right? So your first part was like, you built a group just to sell a thing, and my purpose of building a group was to make me better, and to make other people better. And before I built the group, I was very active, I, I, we're calling it pre-grouping on my personal page. And I got so many PMs and DMs that it wasn't working. That people were literally messing up and losing an opportunity and not paying their mortgage because I just got, got lost in the DMs. So my goal was to solve that problem, right? It wasn't necessarily to sell stuff. I think by better serving people first, the money will follow, solving problems in exchange for money, everybody is okay with that. So that was the first thing, right? But the second thing was more important, which is am I solving, am I doing brain surgery or am I doing a Band-Aid, right? And I have not yet figured out an easy, scalable way of doing brain surgery, right? So I usually do it in two parts, which is like, look, I know why you're asking this question, and me properly answering this is gonna take like 60 minutes. This is a deep question, and there's strong reasons why you feel this way. I cannot answer that in depth on this lunch and learn. I hope you're okay with that. But what I can do is provide you a smaller, uh, smaller option that solves your problem immediately. Which one would you like to do? And I asked that on my lunch and learn, and there's like a really awkward 30 second delay, but everybody would much rather have somewhat of a solution even if it's not that deep-seated brain surgery. For deep-seated brain surgery, you gotta come to this type of thing. But it can't do brain surgery on 38,000 people, right? And everybody seems to be okay with that. And on my lunch and learn, since I'm slide decking right out, I can say this does not solve your core reason, which based upon my limited information is probably X, but what I can do is show you how to get somebody to pay you money today so you can fix it in the future. And that, that preface makes everything okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Cool, yep, what else you got? You. Um, quick clarification, I think the slide about the interviews, you said um, high post interviews, they, they stay on top in your group for 24 hours. Yes. And then strategy session? Yes. Was that a strategy session to get on a call with you? The strategy session is to get on a call with the person that is being interviewed by me. So let's just say like Jimmy Rutowski, Jimmy somewhere in here, he's got the blonde hair that he has to re-dye. But like I did an interview with Jimmy, and like a lot of people are like, Jimmy, this is super awesome, like you know, HVAC ads, and solar, and you know, X, Y, Z, one, two, and three, you're really, really smart. And what I didn't want was everybody to PM Jimmy, and then Jimmy say, I can't answer everybody. I said, Jimmy, you gotta promise they're gonna answer three people, and I'm gonna introduce you to them. So I PM, I group PM, I say, hey, this is Alex, he got one of the strategy sessions. Hey, this is Jenny, she got one of the strategy sessions. This is Lauren, she got one of the strategy sessions. Jimmy, make sure they're taken care of. They leave the conversation. Then I follow up with those three people. The strategy session is not with me. The interviews are not about me. They're about the person in the tribe, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Cool, you got it. Oh, we're doing the clapping after. Okay, yeah, there you go. What's going on, buddy? I, I hope that the presentation was good. You, like, you came up before and you're like, I hope it's awesome. Fire, All right. All right, mine, cool. is, mine is straight to the point. Um, so with those interviews that, interviews that you do, do you find a way to, you, so you gave them all away for free and awesome and all that stuff, but do you add some of them into your paid programs, the ones that you do have or you do or do not have? Do I ask people on the interviews to do what? No, I said those interviews that you do, like you capture the recording of the video, do you add that interview, like let's say as a bonus to a course, or do you add it as a section or a module, like certain in interviews? Everybody who buys my course is also part of my free group, so they automatically get that included. Okay. But I don't ever say like, hey, uh, here's this free thing, I'm throwing it in for free. Like, it doesn't really happen that way. Um, at the end of every purchase opportunity, I say like, and if you want to join my group, there's another free gift there. So that's how it's included. And I know I can best serve people not by just like giving them a thing, but by bringing them back into an environment where they can excel. And if, if the incentive of the gift is what gets them in, that's cool. But to directly answer your question, I don't leverage the free interviews as like a pay me money thing. That's part of like my gift to people and moving them forward. Gotcha, cool. You got it. <laughs> Do we have to clap? Okay, yeah, what's going on, how are you? Hi, I'm great, thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you for that wonderful presentation. You got it, thank you so much. Um, I've been doing customer research for awesome. the past year of running my business. Cool. And I use that to drive my free content. So I'll ask people in my Facebook group, what do you wanna know? And I'll use that as the topics that I have for uh, my free videos that go you know, to funnel people into the Facebook group, both Perfect. from Facebook and YouTube. Cool. Um, and that's been cool. 
uh, but a lot of people's questions that they bring up are like specific personal problems and while that makes them like nice and relatable and it's story time and the content is engaging my question for you is when I want to transition <coughs> to taking that customer research from you know just adding value to the group and funneling people into the group to actually making an offer a launch post a ticket yes yeah how how specific do you get to the questions that they're asking versus selling them the, the offer that you've already created? How do you make that transition smooth? Great question. So if I'm understanding correctly, you're already doing customer research, you're doing free stuff, great, fine, perfect, and you're saying, what do I do now that I'm doing free stuff? Does that undermine this? Am I supposed to put it together? How do I charge? What do I include? Just like kind of like a whole mix of uncertainty, right? No, what I'm actually asking is when people are asking very specific story-driven you know, oh, problems gotcha, or gotcha, whatever. Yeah. When I'm creating a video for them, like that's cool because I post three videos a week typically. So I'm making a lot of free content because yeah. I believe in adding value to the group. But ultimately what I want to sell them on are the offers that Correct. I've already created. So, so how do I say like, here's this specific problem. Well, I'll sign up for my course. <laughs> so I'll take, and I wish you could go back, but there's like 400 slides. So what I'll do is I'll take all the custom research responses and I'll put them all in a Google Doc and then I'll put them in like, Commonness. So, like, if this is the most common problem, I'm covering that, right? Second most common problem, covering that. Third, fourth, fifth. I end up with like the top 20. I get the same answers you get, which is like, I live over here and I don't know what to do and everything is horrible and life sucks and I and it's I need an answer for me, and I can't do that in a paid program and I can't do that in a ticket. Uh, I just say, hey man, I appreciate this. I can't include it in part of the thing because it only applies to you. If you want, you can ask this on the lunch and learn, and then I can specifically answer it there, and then they're fine with that. But to specifically answer your question, like I take all the customer research answers, top 20, that becomes the agenda in the, in the launch post. And everybody's okay with that. Cool. Everybody's okay with so that. So it's about finding the common denominator in all of the... Correct. Got it. Thank Correct. you so much. I appreciate that. You got it, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> Just one clapper, yeah. <laughs> their personal Facebook friends to their business profile or their business page? I have never had a separation between Jeff and Jeff the Facebook ads guy. Okay. Ever. It's always been the same thing. I don't even use my business page except to run ads for. What I do is make sure that I'm honest and authentic with me and my journey and I document everything on my personal Facebook page. And very often my friends will fall into two categories. The first is like, hey man, I'm psyched to you, I can support you or you're not, but Hell yeah, Rue ha ha, you're super doing cool, see you later, bye. And then the s other people are like, I can't believe you're doing better than me and I hate you. And I go, that's cool, man, snakes in the grass, I got you, I understand. See you later, bye. And that's just part of the natural transition. I have never in my entire course ever said, like, a course of my journey, ever said, hey, could you like my business page? I am my business. There's no separation between. What, what, are you, what do you do in exchange for money? What's like the business part? Uh, I have a tour company. You have a tour company. Yeah. Can you get more specific? I help like coaches and mastermind leaders run events, international retreats so and events. So are you documenting this on your personal Facebook page? Uh, not that much. Just my own personal travels and I also take people around the world. So, so kind of no, kinda, right? Not really. <laughs> you should. Like beyond a shadow of doubt, you should. Like I'm going all in. I'm doing this. I'm going to commit for X number of years. Do it until you don't want to do it anymore. I genuinely believe in my heart, and this hurts to say, that the people who say, I'm going to start a business page, and I'm like it, are playing safe with themselves and are playing to lose. If you want to win and best serve real life human beings, touring and helping people set up their... Their retreats. Their retreats, retreats and their masterminds. Yeah. Why would there ever be a separation between you and what you do? There's not. Right? There's not. Is that documented on your personal page? Could it be better documented? Once you solve that core problem, you will never have to say, can you like my business page or should you like my business page? It's me. I, I hope that addresses the core answer because I didn't want to just say no and pass, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the core thing is like at, at, the, at the deepest level, you are your business and your personal profile should reflect that. And once you do that, you won't have to worry about your business page or liking people or anything like that. Cool. Thank you, you good? Yes. Awesome. Have a few What's going years. on, buddy? Hello. What's uh, happening? Yeah. Um, how how frequently do you at how frequently do you do the ask posts? Ask ASK? Yeah. I do it every Monday. Well, it's kind of like the gym. I say I do every Monday, but yeah, I try to do it every Monday. 
Um, I ask a thing. Half the time, my custom research bombs I know within an hour. Great, I know not to talk about that awesome. But when it does work, I'm having a real-life conversation. Tell me more. What do you mean by that? Get deeper. I want to know. Tell me again. You got different ways of communicating that. And I keep the conversation going, and it's on topic, which is really, really cool. And I know that there are some people that launch businesses based upon the people that they have a common conversation with on the customer research post from my group, which I'm super happy about. Mm -hmm. That's the tribe that I want. So to answer your question, it's every Monday. Awesome. Yeah. And are the, <laughs> the interviews you do, are those at the same time every week as well? So I wish I could say that they are. As, the, as I ran out of people to interview with in my core circle, the schedules got weird and the time zones get weird. And I'm not gonna say somebody who's doing like $10 million a month, no, I can't do Thursday at three, it's Friday at four. You know, I'm not gonna say that, right? So it's usually like <laughs> Thursday afternoons, Friday afternoons, but at all times, everybody has a 24 hour heads up. And I take that same interview and I put in the free course and nobody's left out in the dust. Does that make sense? Right, yeah. and was there a reason you only promote it 24 hours in advance and not for my, my brain is like, I don't remember stuff more than a day, right? So <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Okay, and uh, so I tried to do my first version of your Lunch and Learn. Cool. Uh, last week I said, hey, I'm gonna go live, love and relationship mentoring, ask, ask me anything. Yeah. I got like 30 questions. Cool. And I was able to cover like six of them. Okay. Uh, so I, I was thinking of just saving them for the next time and, and not That's 100% cool. Have a bank of questions mm -hmm. in case like your lunch and learn, like, you're like nobody showed up. Well, hey guys, that's awesome. I've got questions from the crowd and I'll just go ahead and go through here. Great, so last week Alex had a question. I'm gonna answer it now and then tag Alex later on. That's 100% cool. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. You got it. Thank you for asking. What's going on, Will? Hey, is it Will or is it Bill? Bill's fine. Bill, what's going on? Hey, I just felt compelled to share this, actually. I don't Tell have a me. question. Um, I'm a member of the Ask Fam, the free group. Yay! Uh, I found out about Jeff. I don't remember how, but I found out about him, joined the group. But first, Thought he yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah, the, the Ask thing got me. Um, and then I bought a master class of his. Um, and for whatever reason, I was implementing the master class that was brought on by the guest guy there. Jamie and, Eldridge, yeah. Yep. yeah. And I wasn't getting the results with it that everybody else was. And I was like, why isn't this working? And uh, I was trying, I was trying. So I reached out to Jeff, and he's like, well, to try this, try that. And then a couple days later, I'm taking my combat nap in the afternoon because I need those. And uh, my FaceTime phone, my Facebook phone rings. Yep. And it's him. Yep. I'm like, holy shit, Jeff Miller's called me. So I'm like, uh, yeah, hey, Jeff, how are you? you know? <laughs> and um, he called just to say, hey, I've been thinking about what's going on with why that isn't working. Yep. So I did some research, and I was able to figure out it's this. And I just, you know, sorry it's not working for you. Try this, this, and this. But I was able to figure that out, and I was thinking about it. I just wanted to call you and make sure I solved that for you. Yep. And that blew me away. I appreciate it. it blew yeah. me away. Appreciate and that's, that very that's much. why, yeah. you know, you. the authenticity and everything, that he, that's why it, it works so much. And he's the reason, you're the reason I'm here. Oh, I, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Through you. So that's thank awesome. You. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, Jeff? Uh, awesome talk, man. Thank Got you, man. a whole lot I of information it. about it. It was awesome. Um, I had a question about the email list and email list building. Yes. From what, what point in, the, in your process do you transition from uh, doing your research and then uh, exchanging emails with someone to add them to your email list? So when somebody joins my group, I ask them three questions, like those Facebook questions. I go, uh, hey, you promise to follow the rules? Everybody says yes. I said, hey, if you want, you can leave your email. And mm -hmm. then about one third of the people do. Okay. They're totally fine with that. Right. The emails that I send are emails directing them to the video interviews mm -hmm. with real life human beings and interviews that I'm proud of. Like I know when somebody's starting their Facebook ad agency, they have specific questions on certain things. I get it. I don't want the same group to be asking the same questions. That's how veterans get burnt out. Right. That's how people just end up leaving groups. Mm -hmm. So I've gone through the interviews. I go, I had that question, I had that question, that question. So every day for three days, they get those interviews mm -hmm. and the bullet points. Okay. Cool. That's number one. Number two is when they want the free interviews, uh, interview series. I say it's free, but you have to give me your email. Mm. Okay. And that's the only thing that I've done to go from zero to 14,000 people. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. You got it. What's going on, Luke? What's up, man? Quick question. I feel like I'm kind of procrastinating because I don't like have enough people in my head who I want to interview yet and yeah. schedule that. So I've got a couple. 
do you just not worry about or keep trying to fill the calendar? If you can't fill a week, do you just sub in something else? Or how do you kind of manage? So there's two things that I've done in the beginning when I had that gap problem. The first is on my personal page. Uh, I asked, and I forget, I'll have to go through it, but it's effective like, hey, who could I interview with that does X? Can you tag them? Like 50 people. That was easy. It goes real fast, right? And then what happens is the 50 people say, yeah, let's do an interview Thursday. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> can, can I schedule you, right? And then I schedule them a week out, and I always have a backup, right? So that helped kick off the first 20 or 30 interviews, which is awesome, right? The second thing that I do is I go inside of my inner circle and say, hey, we've got two dropouts. Does anybody here want to talk about specific results that are super awesome? Cool, let's get you some spotlight. That's my second tier. And then my third tier is going to the public room saying, hey, I'm looking for an interview on Thursday to talk about X, Y, Z, one, two, and three. Who do you know of? And then the 38,000 people, look, if 38,000 people say you, you're gonna fall through, right? So like those are the three tiers that I go through to fill a gap or build a schedule. The first is on my personal page that kicked it off. Then my IC as a backup. And then the, the public group as a third tier backup. And I've never had a problem interviewing people or finding a slot. And when you're doing these, you're not, you don't have any like JV perspective or making money. It's purely just value and giving. Correct. And, but they're not really directly competing with you, though, at the same time. Even if they are, I'm 100% okay with somebody saying, hey, Jeff, thanks so much for my start. I'm transitioning to Harvard. Fuck yeah. They found somebody better than me. I'm super happy for them. One clap. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> but like, my goal isn't to keep somebody forever. My goal is to graduate them. Yeah. So like if somebody comes on that's better than me, which they are, hey, go talk to that guy. He's better than me. The cool part about that is I now know who I should be paying money to, get mentoring from to up my skills as A. B, when this person goes through that experts program, they come back, I say, hey man, uh, Alex was talking really well about your program. Would you like to do a $97 masterclass and see what happens from there? So I cool. hope that answers your uh, question. Last quick question. For your personal profile, I really struggle with you know, you know, I do the Italian thing, right? Yeah. Which I love, but I also love all this, the marketing, the business, and yeah. all that shit. So I always just feel like, I don't know what to post, because they'll be confused if I talk about Italy and travel and all that stuff, and then, oh, by the way, I'm at Travel Buyers and this marketing and these funnels and stuff. Yeah. That'll kind of conflict. Do I just pick one and I gotta, you know, cut part of myself off personally, or do both? It, it's so interesting, the idea of conflict that, like, our brains <laughs> deal with. Like, you're, you have the same problem, and I mentioned earlier, it's like, it's the first time you've hit this problem or you can't figure it out. It's not the first time the problem has existed, right? I had the same problem, which was like internal conflict. Do I do this or do I do that? I'm not really sure. And the correct answer is you can have a narrative that includes both. You're a digital marketer that speaks two languages, too? Four. Oh my God, dude. Like, I only speak English <laughs> in Miami. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, that makes no sense, right? But here's the dollar-driven sense behind it. I'm cutting off half my market. Your advantage is you speak English, Italian. Spanish and French. And Portuguese? Spanish and French. Spanish and French. You've got four times the market than I do. You could literally be a digital marketer that speaks four languages that will show you how to do X, Y, Z, and one, two, and three. Your advantage is the fact that you're now realizing you have twice as much market and three times the opportunity and four times the speed than me. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. Very cool. Yeah. What's going on, Alex? What's up, Jeff? Um, How you doing? Oh, killer presentation, Appreciate man. Appreciate it. So much fucking value. It's yeah. Epic. And so Andrew's uh, a dear friend of mine, and he's also a client, and he's been trying to get me to do this Facebook group thing for, for the past like year or so, Yeah. and I've been super resistant to it. And as I've been here, and I've been more enrolled, and I watch your presentation being more enrolled, um, I'm curious, so on my personal profile, like I, I do m most of my marketing um, through my personal profile. Yes. We've done seven figures just from uh, the, the, the organic marketing that, that, that we do on there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, when, when I do a group, and Andrew, yes, I'm saying when, not if, when I do a group, <laughs> um, what do you suggest? Like I have probably 50 or 60 like content posts that are super value rich that I I'm at a point with my marketing that I would put my mark if I died today in my funeral I would have my marketing on my tombstone cool like you know, I'm I, it's so aligned with who I am yeah and so I'm 
curious, like, how would you leverage, like, those assets that I have, whether it's through my posts or through my lives, yeah. that, or just the videos that I shoot with uh, Kyle Lasoto, who's here? Yeah. Like, w how would you leverage that when I transition everything to a group? The, the best avenue to talk about a relationship with a group is to be honest, authentic, transparent, which you 100% are. And what I've discovered is that when I slide deck, everything makes sense. That's just how it works for me. Like Alex Becker has like his awe board or whatever. Sam Oven does his whiteboard. I got, I got Google Slides. It works. Boxes, arrows, lines, it makes total sense. And when you do your lunch and learns, you can take the bullet points and the inspiration from the marketing you've already done that's already worked, and that becomes a bullet point and you walk through it. Mm -hmm. Here's how I did what I did. Here's how I taught people. Here's three things that took somebody from zero to $150,000 a month, and you can learn it all in less than 35, day, uh, 35 minutes. And if you'd like to take a next step, yeah, you can PM me and tag me, but X, Y, Z, one, two, and three. I think if you started doing lunch, learn, and lives, everything would line up very, very well for you, like at the core. And you don't have to worry about being flashy or marketing or nothing like that. You can take the posts that have worked well and use that for inspiration inside of that group. And I've discovered that once you start having a good relationship with, let's just say, 100 people or so in a group, your numbers shoot through the effing roof. And Facebook is like, we want more people just like you. So out of the five things that I talked about, I think your lunch and learns would blow mine out of the water. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, man. And so in your group, is your, are those lunch and learns the only pieces of content that you're putting in there? Or are you, are you still giving values or text posts in there oh, as well? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. so uh, the group engine, I do one a day every day. And I'm, I interact probably like maybe a solid 30 minutes. And when I'm active, I care. I'm looking at them, answering the questions on the thread publicly. And so I'm not trying to recycle content, I'm trying to like solve problems and answer questions. Mm -hmm. And it's one hour every single day, each thing, and everything lines up really effing well. And I don't have to look at like my future marketing and bring something back, because I'm caring more about their journey and where they are. And if we, you wanna talk more in detail, we can like do it off stage, cool. because I think there's like two or three more things that'll like, that'll make you say, oh my God, that's awesome. Cool, awesome open loop. I'm, I'm you in. got it, yeah. you got it, cool. We have uh, 35 seconds on the clock, so. There you go, buddy, and I think I know your face from Facebook, but it's the first time I've seen, yeah, yeah what's hi, going it's on? It's Miro, man, thank you for everything. I'm gonna you got be it. super fast. I have a bunch of questions, but I'm gonna keep it to the most important one. I have the conscious, on conscious entrepreneur community, and I'm noticing in everything that you said, the intimacy ex is extremely important, and I'm thinking, if I changed it to the, the behind the scenes of yep. you know, the conscious entrepreneur community launching XYZ, I'm in a personal development space. And so I guess my, that's the first question. I guess the uh, bigger one is the JV. Yeah. Um, when you have people in your interviews, you mentioned in your interview funnel, yep. you do JVs. What does that look like? So on the fifth step, I say, look, if everything works out really, really well, I know that this is gonna come up. This is how we do JVs. And I JV in a very specific way because it's still my, it's still my butt. Where that sounds, but more importantly, it's still your butt. And I hate it when you get an email that's like, hey, buy this guy's stuff, and it's somebody else, like, I, I don't know what's happening. So the way a JV is, is they teach me a thing. Mm. And I'm usually the dumbest person in the room, like usually. So when they're teaching me a thing, there's 99 other people that are like, oh my God, that's so cool as well. So we sell tickets, they get half, I get half, I sell in the group, it's taught by somebody smarter than me, and the last lunch, in, or the last, inter the last launch, we had like an 180 people. I had to upgrade my Zoom. I didn't know that was a thing, right? <laughs> they get a recording. They can sell it independently for me. I get a recording. I can sell it independently. But at the core, 180 people walked away saying, oh my God, that was amazing. It was taught the way Jeff learns, and it was taught the way Jeff communicates, and it makes total sense. And what I do is the day before, an hour before, I review the slides so it makes sense, and then I provide that JV partner with all the master classes we've done in the past. So they know the tribe and the community culture and everything is on point. When I started doing that, everything worked. Everything. And everything on the store, half of it's a JV. I'm not an expert. Right? Oh, that makes sense. So in the past, I was thinking the master class is just basically me showing up. But what you've done is you take the expert to learn from. That's the master class. And that's the launch post that leads to that. They're, they're witnessing you learning. Correct. That's yeah. Amazing. So it's not like a free for all where like everybody gets like, I don't know, like, who, let's pretend I'm like Russell Brunson's JVing me, like being crazy, right? But like, let's say Russell Brunson is teaching me a thing. It's not like 90 people asking Russell Brunson a question. It's me learning from Russell Brunson, and the slides are built a very specific way, and I'm looking at the Zoom chat, and okay, but what about this? And that question's inspired by the Zoom chat. More so, I've taken it to the next step, and I say, all right, guys, a week from now, I'm gonna give you a Google form, ask whatever questions you like, 
and that guy or that gal is going to record a Loom video and answer all of them. And now I'm taking a next step and saying, if you want to get the upgrade, you can get a very specific, intimate five-on-one group session for now an and ask whatever you want, like upsells along the way. I'm testing that out now. So I hope I answered your question, which is the way I JV is like, it's me and that person. They're teaching me a thing. It's all brand new information for me. I'm usually not the smartest person in the room. And the way I learn is the way most people learn. So there you go. Thank you. You got it, buddy. No need to, okay, we're doing clapping again. What's going on? Oh, we have to end. Um, if you've got any specific questions, I want to make sure I answer them afterwards. Um, and I'm going to be rooting and tooting and walking around. Sorry, but that we just ran out of time. I need to make one statement, though. Okay. I don't have to ask my question. Jeff, I have had the opportunity to be interviewed by you in yes. person in your office. I had the opportunity to watch you speak at Andrew's Mastermind earlier this year. Yep. I had the opportunity to see you speak at a 30-person Mastermind just a month ago. Yes. And now a 200-person Mastermind. Isn't that crazy? This is where you're meant to be. Can we give Jeff a round of applause, that. please? I appreciate Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll ask my question later. Thank you. Are we done? Yeah, so you don't have to clap again. My name is Jeff. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what happens next, but that's it. See you later. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>